has uh, piezo guitars, PRSs. So we have two out outputs from the guitar, and we have to have two belt packs for the wireless. So one is electric, and one is acoustic, basically. And it needs to be switched on the fly. So if I want to have a only acoustic, or acoustic with clean electric, or acoustic with distorted, which I started using, which is really fun for some old riffs. It's, uh, people look, where's that? all the guitar players? And they can play a pattern, and it's an acoustic overdubbing it, which is this makes the sound bigger. Um, my pedal board is a, a musicon switching system, so I can have loops, so I don't have to go through the pedals uh, to save a pathway with, with a signal. But I have a, I have a Strymon Volante, more like a vintage type of echo, and I use the spring word in it for clean tones, and I have a piece of electronic uh, flashback delay that I only have for extra ambient stuff, which has a mash effect, so if you press it, it, it becomes an expression pedal, so like, you can get oscillations and stuff like that. But most of the pedals I have um, Univibe, uh, uh, Boss Octaver, I have a Phase 90, if you want to play Eruption. And, uh, uh, and then I have a Fuzz pedal, but that's in the front, it's not in the loop system, because those can be tricky. And then I have a noise gate, this ISP Mini noise gate, which is really good. But I also don't have, want to have, I want it mostly turned off, but some nights, especially in the, in the States, the power can be a bit tricky, noisy sometimes, and th then I need to have that on. But that's a really good one. I totally recommend that. It's very... Uh, it doesn't suck any tone. Uh, but um, I, if I play clean, I always turn it off. But if we go to these, some... <laughs> Things like that, when you want to have short breaks, I always put the gate on because then it's dead silent. It's, mm. then that's Do you use a, a volume pedal live? Yes, always volume pedal too. The same as he has it. So it acts like a, the knob on the guitar, so it cleans up. Yeah. Uh, because we have some swells, and when I tune, I, I put it down so I don't have to press another preset to tune. It saves me time. And, I have a lot of them. Some of the old songs I have to keep in mind a lot of ambient. It has to be a tremolo on a certain chord and stuff like that. So there's some songs a bit tricky with effects. Yes? Yeah, don't you have a signature Olsen guitar amp also? Yes, I, we, Olsen amps is a Swedish amp manufacturer and we did an amp called Little Hill because mm -hmm. my nickname is Kul, <laughs> which means hill in Swedish. <laughs> and um, it's uh, 18 watt with the. Um, EL84 tubes in it, but uh, he is more doing more uh, bluesy type of amps before, and I convinced him to do more of high gain amp. Yeah. We worked on that for a couple of years, and that's the amp I play all the time when I record back home. It's, it sounds killer actually, but live it's it doesn't really. You need a little bit more power, but um, it will definitely handle a pub gig. Uh, the loop in it is really good, it's very transparent and it has a kind of percussive distorted tone I like, it's, it works with you, it doesn't work against you, but still has the more, you know, uh, a Marshall Plexi tone goes to 11, Edwin Halen type of fat distortion. Yes? Is there any piece of advice that you've received from like some of the like, monster players that you've played with throughout your career that really stuck with you? Well, yeah, definitely, yeah. Well, that one really nice guy, Doug Aldrich, he used to play with the Whitesnake mm. uh, and uh, Dio. He was in Dio also. He, we were playing some gigs with Whitesnake and he... I, I was a bit nervous before the gig and he was really cool. He said, just go up and enjoy yourself. Have fun. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good advice. <laughs> It's a very L.A. surfer type of dude. <laughs> and also the, the advice I mentioned earlier about the bands um, I got from the guy from Calamus and yeah. Got many good advices from John Norum. And also I, have, I need to mention I was in a band when I was 19. My first gig was a band called Talisman. And uh, Marcel Jacob who played bass there is not with us anymore. He he, he taught me a lot of stuff, especially when it comes to rhythm guitar. He taught me the more, I think he 
Ingvi told him a lot of stuff because he was in Rising Force with Ingvi. And uh, the more I was more playing chord riffs like that, which we all liked. But he taught me the more the black way, black, not the black, the black, <laughs> the black more uh, thing when you know what hand to play. All that stuff because uh, you go to music store usually. Or smoke on earth. People they play that, but it's. That kind of stuff, and all the, I mean, lots of black more riffs. Marcel taught me I'm a Viking. Really? Yes. <laughs> Bass monster, yes. very virtuoso bass yeah, player. Yeah. It was it was quite inspired by Billy Sheehan. I remember he was doing the yeah, yeah. thing. I was picking it in really Yeah, it was pick 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 bass player. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any more things? Yes. Um, I guess how old were you, and at what point in your life do you remember? Uh, that's what I want to do. I want to play guitar. Um, quite early, I would say when I was about fourteen. But I started playing tw when I was 12. But I started playing violin when I was about six with Suzuki, oh. which was by, by ear. But I wasn't really that interested. But I, but I kept doing it for a few years. And uh, you had to play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Stars in 16 different versions with six and 16 different rhythms. And stuff like that. But, um, but it was probably a good experience, you know, somehow it, it did good and we got kicked out because me and my friend was playing, was sending there playing Breaking the Law with U.S. Priest on the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I got my first guitar when I was nine, my, my dad bought it to me and he, he showed me my, the first riff, so... Oh, I can't even play it anymore. Sorry, Dad. Uh, some blues, basic blues. Something like that. Okay. <laughs> Also, yeah. wasn't there um, a show that aired on, televi on Swedish television, like the Dortmund? Uh, Dortmund, yes, yes. Like oh, yeah, three. Yeah. That was also very important. Yes. Good point. Well, when still have it on cassette, though. I recall it, it was the same time it was on radio. So you had your C90 ah. tapes ready. You know, so you had Judas Priest and Quiet Riot and Iron Maiden and... Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, Ozzy Osbourne, The Flapper, yes. well, they're more heavy. Yeah. Can you imagine? Uh, <laughs> so most MSG, my MSG, group. true. That. Yes. Uh, yeah, that was that was amazing when that came about. When yeah. I, th I think I was eight years old when that came, but yeah. it was just wow. I still have the cassettes. I can bring them tomorrow. Two euros. Still. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to play yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shall I play? Uh, Try to play another of those yeah. weird yes. tracks yes. that I was scared of. Yes. 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 Yes.
I messed up again. <laughs> but thank you for the support, anyhow. Uh, yeah, maybe some more questions or. <laughs> yeah, it's not a problem. I, it's a boring hotel room, anyways. <laughs> or it's it's nice, but uh, it's, yeah, it's just more fun. Um, <laughs> do you, uh, you have any solo albums? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been a goal. But stuff like this, this is solo material used to solo over. This, this could eventually, after coming up with more melodies and arranging these two ideas, might end up on a solo level. If only you had the time, or it's always something that shows up. And also, I've I've written some other stuff. Uh, it's actually one song ready with complete runs that. I'm not playing here today, so it's uh, it's plans of it. I hope it. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna try to work on it parallel with when we start working on the new Opeth album. We still have a few tours in the fall, but after that, I need to get the solo album done. So there's yeah. definitely plans for that. Good. Because I should have done one. Yeah. It's, some people have asked for it, but not a lot of people like to. Listen to guitar stuff, but uh, there's oh, a few. Yeah. There's a, a few. Yeah. 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 <laughs> about 45 here in the room. Yeah. 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 That's enough. <laughs> no, but that would be. This is like a life goal that I haven't done yet. I done an album. I had a band called Southpaw with the that I did an album with, but that was with vocals and uh, I'm thinking maybe doing just an instrumental. Yeah. yeah. Old school. Yeah. Good. And um, but. Uh, I have a good setup because the drummer who plays in Opeth now, he he has his own drum studio so we can record real drums easy and we don't have to do everything at the same time because he has the same setup, same drum, so uh, and also um, it, it might be Martin Mendes playing bass on it, the, the bass player in Opeth because he actually plays the stuff you heard now, it's Martin Mendes playing bass on and also that drum. Okay. This, this recording is 12 years old. Oh, okay. So we can definitely pimp it up a bit. Who is that the genre? He's called Sami Karpinen. He used to be in a band called Therion. Mm -hmm. But he's, uh, he's very. He likes his rhythm stuff and he, he's, he's a very fusion type of drummer. Uh, but he, yeah, he's, he's practicing a lot now to learn a lot of songs. And he, yeah. But he, he, saved our, he saved our assets basically. Because we had to go on tour and we couldn't go with Martin because of different reasons. Uh, some have to do with the pandemic and things like that. But so it's a uh, yeah. Oh yes. We had a really cool riff rhythm section going on there. Can you show that maybe slower? <laughs> the clean stuff or? I uh, was thinking you know the, the slightly less complicated version of the complicated thing you did earlier. <laughs> The middle part, yeah, the one that I actually play. Yeah. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It's a diminished thing of that. Oh, I should play the wrong entire time. It's supposed to be like that. Signature, this is 
Yep. Yeah. How many guitars do you want? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is always too many. The answer is all of them. It got out of control. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like it can be out of control. Oh. It, it, it might be. It might actually be 40 guitars. Jesus. Whoa, bro. You gotta pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. <laughs> <laughs> You need another zero. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do. I have a couple of a few vintage guitars. I like to use those when we record. It's something when you record when everything is under the loop. I do, um, I, we usually use our 70s strats or 70s Les Pauls. A uh, combination of those. It's something with the old wood when you record. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't matter if you're playing like gent metal or something like that. Then, then it's a different approach, perhaps. Yeah. But um, I find it uh, something has happened, some mag old magic in those pieces of wood. Not all of them. Some of them can be terrible. Yeah. Some new guitars can be better. Also, it's yeah. not it's not carved in stone, but. Um, yeah. Logistically, for the group, do all of you live in Stockholm or? Uh, uh, apart from uh, Martin Mendes, the bass player, he lives in Barcelona, but he has a, a small apartment in Stockholm, so when we rehearse, he, he has to fly over. But he used to live in Sweden, so he knows Swedish, right. but he's originally from Uruguay, mm. so he got here when he was 18, because yeah. the original drummer, uh, Martin Lopez, brought him here. And they, they're open for searching for new musicians, drummer and bass player. In the music stores at the back of the time, you had a phone number you could pull off and, and call, and, and they went into every store and tore those down. So they went and called, and they got the gig. <laughs> it's a very funny story. Yeah. <laughs> but they were good, so but they are good. Yes. I saw Michael had done the music for that Netflix show Clark. Yeah. Do you have any interest in doing work like that yourself? Yeah, sure. Why not? I'm actually doing one thing now. It sounds pretentious, but uh, I've been doing a classic, classic piece with a Rammstein producer, uh, Jakob Helder. He's putting in, in, it's a bit of a secret, I guess, but uh, between us, uh, metal bands doing co compositions and they're going to record it with an entire orchestra. So it's not going to be like Ingrid did the electric guitar on top of it, it's just... Um, so it's almost done, so that's very different for me, but it's more of a horror movie type of uh, theme I came up with. Uh, There's a guy from Halloween, not Corbin, that's the director. Uh, the guy who did the Halloween theme, Carpenter, John Carpenter. A bit like in the vein of that, more very evil, dark sounding. Uh, not, so, not so technical, but more layers of stuff. So, see what, what happens with that. But it was a different thing I've never done before. What um, did you find most challenging about that? Then very interesting. Well, just uh, put, doing media tracks. <laughs> because I didn't play it on guitar, I had to sit with... I'm not a keyboard player, I had to play everything. And my timing was not so good, so I had to fix everything. And it's very boring. <laughs> <laughs> right click. Quantize. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then I'm, I'm not having through the some notes you want to quantize in different. Yeah, yeah. So you can't just quantize like everything. No. If there's. Chop it up. Yeah, you have to. Okay. <laughs> I need a need a, a crash course. Continue. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so the sound of Opeth has changed quite a bit the last ten years. Mm. What can we expect from the new album? Well, I couldn't tell. Because we really don't know, but we've, we've been talking about some stuff that it's, it has to be different, but we say that every time. <laughs> That's always a goal, I guess. But, um, but it, it, uh, it's, I think it will be different from the last three albums, which is, or the last four albums actually, which are, I don't consider them sounding as the same, same, even though this one element is not in there, the growl. That everybody keep asking about, but um, uh, who knows? That the, the door for growl is not closed forever. You never know. 
Can we right. expect more Swedish lyrics? I really like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe that was one off, but that's a real up to Michael. He's uh, in the mind frame that he, he wants to be done with all the touring for this. We're still in the, our mindset is still touring for In Cauda Venenum, the latest album. That was pushed up because of the pandemic, of course. So we're still doing a couple of tours for uh, In Cauda Venenum, and as soon as we're done, we will start. And since he writes the majority of the stuff, he, he needs to be 100% focused on that. He, he, I don't, he doesn't like to have two things in the air at the same time. Yes? Well, composition-wise, so Michael writes most of but what? How, how does it work? Yeah, that's true. Uh, usually he's, he's a bit of a long wolf. I always try to sneak in, uh, not inside him. <laughs> <laughs> With some ideas, I, I always come up with a lot of ideas, and so far I've been in the band for more than 15 years, but I've co-written three songs, so it's not a lot. Oh, wow. But um, it's fine, you know, I, I get to write the solos, and I, everybody contributes with their yeah, playing skills and stuff like that, so I don't have a problem with it, but you, you can always try, you know? uh, but it, it has to be good, of course. <laughs> so. Yeah, usually he, he has he's very good programming drums and making he makes really good demos. So when we record albums, the demos are so good that we use them as a template to play over. So that's our click track basically. Wow. We've been working like that since the Watershed album. So so the drummer he doesn't have need to have us playing live in the studio. He he has the guitars and the arrangement and the vocals also. So he doesn't overplay when the vocal is there. So he gets the whole picture of the track, which has uh, uh, been working good for us. Yes? Do you think you might do something like Damnation again? Like a relatively uh, mellow album? I couldn't tell, but uh, we've been talking about, we always talk about some heavy shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, that, it would be fun to do something really extreme heavy. I don't know, I'll, it's too early to tell. <laughs> And if I say something and he hears it, he's going to be want to do the opposite. <laughs> that's how it works. So, better be silent. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, that, that's a good question. Uh, well, you know, I guess we could do a double album, but there's a lot of ballads already to choose from. Like, it's difficult now playing gigs because there's 13 albums out and one, one person want to hear that and one want to hear it. It's difficult to please everybody. And you want to play as many songs from the albums as possible. So, it's tricky. Oh, you were first, yes. Do you have any non-Western or non-metal influences in your, in your playing? Like, yeah, definitely. Non-Western, well... But not blues rock related. Well, Django Reinhardt and... Uh, yes. I've been listening a bit to Miles yes. Davis, recently nice. getting into that a bit. Uh, the prog stuff, but that's kind of related. Uh, Navishna and King, King Crimson and that more obscure, obscure stuff. Uh, Michael's great, he collects vinyls, me too, but uh, his collection is massive and he, he has knowledge about all these weird bands I haven't heard of, like a French band called Magma, oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. which is very complex. <laughs> <laughs> they have their own language they're singing in. Are you familiar with it? No, no, no. You probably, you might like it. It's a lot of old timings and it's, it's freaked out. Very good yeah. But um, you probably come up with something more. But our bass player is very into Argentine uh, tango from Argentina, like yeah. very melancholic, uh, dark type of tango, not the the one you associate tango with, uh, or at least I do. Which is it's always interesting. So much music out there, and we've been listening to some. Turkish guy, I can't remember his name now, who, yeah, I can't, well, it's a lot of different stuff that I can't place the name on, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, are you listening to anything into black metal? Yeah, I do. What kind of groups? Well, I actually bought the new Abbath album, <laughs> on vinyl. He's, he's a very interesting character, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think he makes some really cool riffs. Like a lot of people laugh uh, or 
uh, get amused by his, his, the classic guitar lesson at uh, Guitar World, oh, if you're yeah. familiar with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who the hell does he do it? Uh, <laughs> but if you continue watching that, when he starts playing his riff, they're really cool. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot of cool stuff. And another black metal band I like is Emperor. Yeah. Uh, and I also played on Ishan, his solo album called Impera, something. I played a solo for him. And so, which is more progressive stuff, but yeah. still uh, in some little black metal. Yeah, more experimental. But, but uh, yeah, well, I mean, I didn't grow up with that stuff. I was more into the regular hard rock, new wave of British metal. That's what I grew up with, basically. Then, of course, Metallic and you know, the trash bands and, and Slayer and stuff like that. <laughs> But the black metal I'll get more interested in, maybe. It's when, it's 18 years ago, which is a long time, <laughs> old. <laughs> but it has certain energy sometimes that it's interesting, I think. Yep. So when you do your solo album, how will you make yourself finish it? Because when it's you making it, there's always the temptation to go back, oh, I can do a better solo, I can write a better riff, and I never finish it. Yeah, that's the problem with it, me doing so bad. I never, I'm never satisfied, but it, it's easier for me to help other people out. But uh, maybe I need a producer. But I'm gonna do an attempt. So. Yeah? Are there any bands that you'd like to produce in the future that you'd like to work with? I, I don't consider myself a producer, it would be Maybe I could help with something, I don't know, but I, I never tried it, so... Uh, it's, it's, it sounds a bit too ambitious for me. I get shy now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, maybe it would be interesting. You know? Even just to play with them? Oh, you play with them, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I could pick one from the top of my head, but... Uh, yeah. But it, right it depends. I'm, I'm, I'm not jumping on every, everything. Since I'm in a band, we, we have to somehow remain a little bit exclusive also. Uh, not play on everything. It wouldn't... It, the money is less important. Even though Ghost is more of a commercial band, you would say. But it's also a friend. And uh, it was also, of course, pretty good pay. But it was also very interesting to do an album with that when you're very, very produced. Like, um, yeah, you have to obey the producer all the time, which is necessarily not a good thing. But uh, it was an interesting process to be a part of. So for me, there's some Sean Lane guitar licks, and you know, every year I try them and every year I fail. Do you have any like white whale guitar solos or licks that you, you really can't fail, but you want to? Well, Sean, uh, good that you mentioned Sean Lane. I, I really like him. It's uh, this one lick I played tonight that I kind of stole from him. Uh, so I go. Especially when you do it. That's a sweep there. It's from his instructional video, I think. Well, one guy that I always admire is Alan Holdsworth. Yes. And the, I really yes, like I... his stuff when he played with the band Tempest, if you're familiar with that. It's, yeah. He had a more of a rock tone. It's the 70s stuff. And great album, Tempest. And he, the solos on that. Uh, and also, what's that, that band called? Before Tempest, he was in another band. Donzella? Is it Don? No. I, um, Soft Machine. Soft Machine, thank Soft you. Machine. Okay. And at least I try to find solos in their albums, but it, there's a YouTube clip when he plays live with Soft Machine. He's playing a white SG. He does yeah. this. <laughs> you can definitely tell that Ed Van Halen was very inspired by him yeah. in some ways. So, listen, yeah, Alan Holdsworth is. God. The other stuff is too complex. You can play this stuff. No! Like oh, no. <laughs> no. oh, yes, you can. No. <laughs> I, I left an Alan Holdsworth concert. Because I was offended because I didn't understand the stuff 
that was coming out. It, it didn't have anything to do with the fingers on the fretboard. <laughs> so I went home and watched some horror movie and ate popcorn. <laughs> I was there actually yeah. to see Chuck Wackerman on the drums. Oh, oh yeah. Frank Zappa. Yes. 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 But I, mean, I love Alan's Lots of old LPs and road games and that yeah. that when he plays more, more rock stuff with more rock songs? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of an axe fan. Not so much. But check out, if you haven't heard The Tempest, it's, it's, it's available on Spotify. I want to uh, play some amazing songs there. Hey, what else do you recommend? What yeah. But um, yeah, solos. I, it's fun to learn like classic solos. I tried to learn a couple of Ulrich solos when I was younger. I want to learn some English solos and, and some Michael Schenker stuff. Just to try if I was able to pull them off. And also, Later, I've been sometimes. Sometimes again, I have to learn eruption with Halen, or I have, I have to finally nail that eruption, which it's, I can't. You can't play it here because it's something everybody doing in music stories. But <laughs> but um, uh, but I didn't. Some people just went in for copying one guitar player. Like there was a lot of Ingwi freaks apparently, and um, I try to avoid that. Just trying to test myself where I was able to pull off some of my guitar hero solos. Lines 
to combine the three voices in silver arpeggio, for instance, to find. <laughs> Get more mileage. <laughs> <laughs> Do you yeah. think there was more of the borrowing before and exploring afterwards? Or yeah, it's more. Uh, I don't. I don't sit home and copy licks. No, really. I try to come up with own licks, and especially when you get. Can you do a solo on this, please? Mm. I don't look at uh, other guitar players. Mm. I try to. First, I try to find a melody in my head, uh -huh. and just. Uh, try to translate what my head wants, and uh, just noodle about, and mainly, maybe sometimes just improvise uh, a lot over the, the section I'm supposed to play on, and then if I get stuck, I try to find the melodies, mm -hmm. patterns, or stuff like that. So it's a bit different, but I now I wouldn't go. Hmm, maybe I should put on a Randy Rhodes solo and steal something. <laughs> oh, it's not like that. But... <laughs> what would the brand make? But Randy Rose, you made some really cool metal riffs. Yes. For me, it's very inspirational. But more with the riffing than the leads, maybe. Yeah, same here. But th that one, uh, the Iron Mad one, is uh, a great. Uh... <laughs> It's a bit sinister sounding for being 81 or 82. Maybe that's about it, or what do you say? No, don't look at me. Everybody cool, are you alright? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just you were talking about Sean Lane and uh, taking some licks from him. Uh, was there any like instructional material you read over as a teenager and took a lot yeah. of influence from? Can but you name a couple of things? Just like, when I grew up, there was a lot of those instructional videos. Yeah. And we were always competing with them. We went through the Bo, Gil Bo Gilbert ones, the, and stuff, yeah. the Sean Lane ones, but he yeah, was very was. complicated. And yeah, that's, <laughs> we're looking yeah, at that still Frank Gambale <laughs> one for a while, but oh, yeah, the, the lick that slurped oh, Elaine, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Michelangelo! Michelangelo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Keys to the... Kenny Moore, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very good. Kenny Moore is a fantastic player. Oh, yeah. and, um, I love the stuff he does with UFO now, also. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's more. I, I like George Lynch a lot when I was Yes. Oh, because he has a great, great yeah. tone and yeah. more of a. I wouldn't say sloppy, but it has some originality that. Yeah, that was yeah for sure. Some good, cool energy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I probably forgot a lot of those people. But <laughs> yeah. Michael Lee Ferkins, yes. you remember him? Oh, yeah. oh yes, yeah. I love Michael Lee Ferkins. Good shrapnel <laughs> it was a bit different because he did more chicken picking uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. He will be here Not like a normal shrapnel guy. Uh, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We played together in um, Jason Becker. Not dead yet. Wow. Uh, in Holland with Guthrie and uh, Andy, James, and yeah. Yeah, so uh, oh. Kiko Rovero. Mm -hmm. so, okay, it was a backstage <clears throat> jam of doom. So, mm -hmm. but but uh, Michael E. Forkins is one of my favorite guitar players. I love it. I stole a lot of the. Not I did. I don't know how to play anyone else's licks, but just from you know, to game, to game, to go. Especially his first album. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Laughing stacks. It's great. Oh, so James, cool. James Kotek. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. not so good. Now. <laughs> not. <laughs> no. I, have you seen? Uh, oh no, never mind. No, 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 no. That's a disastrous, <laughs> disastrous. No. Sweet rock gig. Yeah. With it scorpions. Was, no, with um. Kingdom Come. Come. Holy shit. Recently, right? Yes. Oh, it was, it's, uh, it's, it's the ultimate it's embarrassment. Huh? Don't look I, I, I mean, Don't look up Kingdom Come from <laughs> Sweden Rock Festival. James Bond, Santa said to the right. Oh, God. I will, it's, it's, I will look it up. It, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really spooky. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's hard to watch. One other instructional video going back to the 90s that I looked at was 
Steve Truvado. He used to be an instructional at MI, but he was a country guy. Yes, country. With a lot of we just. Uh, we shouldn't play that with a sword drum. Stuff like that. It's banjo rolls. Interesting too. One guy that in the metal scene that's doing a lot of that stuff in his riff is um, Mastodon guy, Brent Hunt. He's using a lot of that. But you can translate it so Rick. Did I say Rick Bial? But that's not, that's not the guy. That's a YouTube guy. <laughs> Steve Trumato. He had this banjo roll where he'll be sounding, but and I figure it's interesting to translate that to minor shape and maybe you can use it in a metal context. Uh, it's a good thing to tune guitar first. <laughs> or is it that chorus again? No, it wasn't. Nah, that's not that chorus. <laughs> so. Interesting to translate those hillbilly licks into minor. Perhaps. But that's a bit like what Brandon's is doing with Mastodon sometimes. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to do an attempt. <laughs> Thanks. Maybe one more song? Uh, oh, I don't have any more songs. <laughs> you don't have songs. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you sort of Paganini uh, copies number 16, if you remember it? If, should I play it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Spot. <laughs> but um, in, at, back home on the couch, I can do semi. Is that an invitation for him? Or? <laughs> no, not really. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Drum roll. Do you know it? I have tried to learn it, so that's yeah. why I'm interested how you you are about your fingerings, because it's really hard to. There's so many possibilities how you can. Yeah, put it up. It's uh, but when these big intervals, I use the hybrid. That's a good trick for yeah. those kind of things. Instead of. <laughs> if I start with this, I'm gonna bore you all night. <laughs> No more songs? I don't have any more songs. No more songs? <laughs> oh, that songs, or are you not allowed? Or... Any more caprices? Uh, oh. <laughs> I can play some riffs if you like. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Like, um, you know, if you're with the track Devil's Orchard, that's a pretty cool riff. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it counts to five, but it doesn't matter now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
definitive. Yeah, that's yeah. a bit of sinister riff. <laughs>